Hello, welcome to today's webinar, How to Retire FileNet in Weeks Rather Than Months. Before we begin today's webinar, I want to review a few housekeeping items. The session is being recorded and you will be sent a link to the recording following today's session. If at any point during the webinar today you have a question, please type it into the questions panel. We will answer questions at the end of the session. Now I will hand the webinar over to Tony. Thanks, Jean. Hi, I'm Tony Parsnet, and I'm with Technology Services Group. Um, this webinar is going to cover strategies for migrating from FileNet to Alfresco and some ways to retire a uh, legacy FileNet system sooner rather than later. So just a little bit of background about TSG. Uh, we are a Chicago-based consulting firm. Um, we were founded in 1996. Uh, we specialize in implementing ECM solutions across various different industries. Uh, we were one of the first Alfresco partners uh, back in 2006. We're also an AWS partner and we have a lot of implementations of Alfresco on AWS. And uh, we have various ECM software offerings uh, based on industry best practices. Um, that software is community and customer designed. TSG has received a number of partner awards from Alfresco over the years. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about our migration uh, product, Open Migrate, which has won Product of the Year from Alfresco in 2015 and Solution of the Year in 2017. Uh, here at TSG, uh, we have a unique consulting and software approach. Uh, we provide enter enterprise class software to our clients as part of consulting arrangements. Um, there's minimal or no cost to our clients for our software, and the enhancements to the software are shared with our client community. Um, our software suite uh, is consisted of uh, Open Content Management Suite, which includes Open Content Search and Case, those are user interfaces, um, on top of Alfresco, um, Open Content Web Services, Open Annotate, our annotation tool, Open Overlay is a PDF stamping and overlay tool, and of course, open migrate, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. Uh, here's a diagram of how those software solutions integrate with Alfresco. So you see across the top are the end user interfaces. Um, we have open content search case and forms, as well as our annotation and overlay tools. Those integrate with Alfresco through our open content web services, um, which is a REST web services layer. Uh, built for Alfresco. Um, in the bottom right-hand corner, you see Open Migrate, uh, which is a tool that we use to load content into Alfresco from various other systems, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. A little bit about my background. I'm a senior project manager and technical architect with TSG. I've been around here for 14 years, um, working very heavily on ECM projects, primarily with Alfresco. Um, I'm the product manager for Open Migrate, as well as our migration practice lead. Today in the webinar, um, I'm going to be covering uh, some challenges with migrating from FileNet, and I'll give an overview of our, of our Open Migrate tool that we use to migrate from FileNet and other legacy ECM systems to Alfresco. I'm also going to cover our migration methodology and approaches and talk about the importance of the planning step uh, for a migration. So specifically talking about FileNet migrations, there are a number of challenges that we encounter with FileNet. Um, one with our customers just being that licensing and maintenance costs with FileNet are very expensive and we see our customers that are migrating off of FileNet wanting to get off as quickly as possible. Um, FileNet applications and store, storage hardware are often very slow, fragile, and unsupported at many of the clients that we see. Um, a lot of time those systems kind of uh, go without the tender loving care that they need for several years before our customers decide to migrate off of them. So it is very important to um, move off as quickly as possible onto better supported systems. Um, our customers often lack the resources with FileNet knowledge to support and maintain their FileNet systems. And um, one of the other challenges uh, with FileNet specifically is a lot of the documents are stored in legacy formats that won't work with target systems like Alfresco just right out of the box. So for example, um, a lot of FileNet image services documents, um, a multi-page document might be stored as a single file for every single page of the document. Um, so that's another challenge that we see. 
Moving on to our migration tool, Open Migrate. Um, Open Migrate is a high performance migration tool for one time and ongoing migrations. Um, it's a completely Java based framework made up of highly configurable and extendable migration components. Um, it's a proven methodology that we've developed to assist our clients in migration of content between different repositories, and it's a continuously developed product of TSG since 2006. It's um, widely used at a lot of different clients, and overall, we've migrated billions and billions of documents with Open, with open Migrate. Open Migrate can be configured to work with various source and target systems interchangeably, and Open Migrate is an ECM specific migration tool. So it is built um, with ECM in mind and it uh, su supports requirements for ECM migration, like migrating um, different document types, um, migrating properties or metadata, and mapping between uh, different systems. Supports folder structure and configuring what folder structure documents will be migrated to in the target system. Supports migration of both native content and renditions, versions, and annotations as well. Here's a look at the list of source and target systems that we currently have available with Open Migrate. Um, you'll see on the source side there are a number here today. In the presentation, I'm going to be focus, focusing on uh, FileNet. Uh, we have uh, source adapters for both FileNet image services and P8. On the target side, obviously, today we're going to be talking about the Alfresco target. Um, we also have targets for other ECM systems and AWS S3 and DynamoDB as well. Here's a simple diagram of what a, an example migration from FileNet to Alfresco might look like. So here you'll see we're using our Open Migrate source adapter for FileNet and the target adapter for Alfresco. Some of the features of Open Migrate, uh, it is a completely Java-based command line utility. Um, because it's Java, it is platform agnostic, so it can run on a variety of operating systems. And when we have databases involved, we do connect to databases using JDBC, so we are able to connect to a wide variety of relational databases as well. As much as possible, we try to use the native Java connectivity APIs for all of our source and target systems. Open Migrate is very heavily configurable using XML and properties files, and it was built from the ground up for high volume throughput. So we have um, components within Open Migrate that we are able to multi-thread so that we can get the maximum throughput and migration speeds possible. Here's an overview of the various components of Open Migrate. Um, you'll see along the bottom we have the migration and engine, engine and pipeline, and this is what basically orchestrates the migration from start to finish. Um, on the left-hand side, we have the queue populator and queue. This is basically just the to-do list for the migration, um, the list of all the documents that need to be migrated from the source to target systems. Um, in the middle, we have our adapters for the source layer, the mapping layer, and the target. Um, these are all in a gray box because these are the components of Open Migrate that we can multi-thread. So um, if we have um, a source system or target system, um, but we want to get some high throughput, we're able to multi-thread these components. And last but not least, and very important in any migration, is the logging component. Um, here we are able to track the success and failure of every single document that runs through Open Migrate, and we have a list at the end of the migration of any successes and failures. So speaking specifically for FileNet, um, our FileNet source connector, um, we use um, our, data, our database connector to actually extract the metadata from the FileNet database directly. Um, we're able to connect to Oracle, DB2, and Microsoft SQL Server databases using direct SQL queries to extract the metadata. For the content, um, Open Migrate is able to work with the various storage options that are available with FileNet. So the legacy optical and storage and retrieval using the Jukebox or OSAR, uh, magnetic storage and retrieval MSAR, and Centera storage and retrieval CSAR. Using our FileNet source connector, our TIFF image files um, 
um, in FileNet are stored as separate files and our source connector is able to take the individual TIFF files and merge them together into a single PDF document before we migrate the content into Alfresco. With our FileNet source connector, we do have a couple of options for how we actually extract the content from FileNet. Uh, the first option is to extract the content via the FileNet API directly. Um, this works well for lower volume migrations, and it's the best option when we're working with the optical storage and retrieval where we're reliant on the APIs to swap uh, the various OSAR disks in and out of the jukebox. The second option is to ext extract the content directly from the FileNet storage device itself and bypass the API. Here, uh, Open Migrate is able to increase the speed of the migration because we're not reliant on the FileNet API, which um, depending on the age of the system and how well it's been kept, the FileNet APIs can get uh, fairly slow over time. Here, the uh, option two, this is the best option when uh, your FileNet storage is MSAR or CSAR. Once documents are extracted from the source system in Open Migrate, they move through the mapping layer. Mapping is the functionality to map metadata values from the source object to the tar target object. And metadata values can be mapped directly from the source to the target object. We can do an indirect mapping where maybe we're changing the name of the attribute in the target system to something else. We also have some transformation options uh, within Open Migrate's mapping layer if we need to do things like removing special characters or changing the case of the text in the metadata fields or appending multiple properties together, we're able to do all that transformation within Open Migrate's mapping layer. Um, this is also where we're able to manipulate the folder structure. So this is really important, especially in an Alfresco migration. We wanna make sure when we migrate into Alfresco that we're not putting too many documents within a single folder. Um, we can use the mapping layer to create a folder structure in Alfresco based on metadata. Some notes about the Alfresco target connector. Um, our target connector supports migration of metadata and content to Alfresco. Um, it automatically creates folders as part of the migration and we're able to migrate versions and annotations as part of the migration process. Uh, we optionally have the ability to generate renditions for content as part of the migration. We see this um, for a lot of our customers that have a lot of Office documents that they want to convert to PDF uh, before uh, moving the content into Alfresco, but still want to maintain the original um, Office documents. We are able to generate those renditions as part of the migration. We're able to apply permissions using Open Migrate or allow Alfresco to just apply the permissions based on folder inheritance. And finally, one of the key features is that Open Migrate is able to maintain the creator, creation date, modifier, and modify date attributes from the source system. So these in Alfresco are the, the audible aspect properties. Um, so we are able to maintain all of that um, as we migrate from FileNet. Similar to our FileNet source, um, our Alfresco target has a couple of options for connectivity as well. Uh, the first option is the simplest. We're just pushing metadata and content through the Alfresco API. This works well for our lower volume migrations or when the timing of the migration isn't a critical factor. The second option is to push the content directly into the Alfresco content store and um, then just push the metadata through the Alfresco API. Um, specifically for content store perspective, um, depending on how your Alfresco is set up, you might have an object store behind Alfresco, you might just have a regular file system, or if you're on AWS, most likely an S3 bucket. Um, this migration approach allows us to move the content in advance this is really helpful, especially in an AWS scenario where we have a lot of content extracted from the source system and we don't want to 
necessarily move that over our VPN connection to AWS. Um, we can snowball the content into the um, S3 bucket that Alfresco is using as its content store, and then use Open Migrate to ingest the metadata into Alfresco and link up to the content that's already sitting in the content store. Open Migrate also has a concept of listeners. Uh, listeners are used to perform specific tasks at any given point during the migration. Um, they add additional data and manipulation power to Open Migrate. So, a couple of examples of how we might use listeners. Um, we might use a listener to look up um, the document owner's employee ID in an external system and apply that to the document as metadata as part of the migration. We're able to do that with the listener in Open Migrate. Another example is if we wanted to apply watermarks to PDFs or other overlays and stamps to PDF documents, we can do that using listeners as part of the migration as well. So our methodology for migration involves five steps. Uh, the first step is the most important is the planning, where we identify the what, when, and how we're going to migrate. The second step is configuration, where we configure Open Migrate to migrate the content from the source system to Alfresco. And at the same time, we're also, if it's a new Alfresco system, configuring the target Alfresco repository to accept the new content. The third phase of the migration is testing. We run tests in a test environment to confirm that all objects are being migrated as expected. And we will always try to test on a large enough data set to calculate um, what we think the expected time is going to be for the full migration in our production system. The fourth step is actually executing the migration in the production system. And last but not least, after the migration is complete, verifying the integrity of the content, metadata, and any related objects in the target Alfresco system. So those are the steps. Um, here is a typical timeline for a migration. Um, as you can see, the planning phase often is the most time intensive phase of the migration. Um, once the planning is orchestrated, the configuration testing, migration and verification typically happen much more quickly. When planning a migration um, using Open Migrate, we have a number of migration approaches that could be chosen from. Um, I'll walk through these individually. We have a Big Bang migration, Delta migration, gradual migration, and rolling migration. So a Big Bang migration, um, in this case, we have content being moved during an outage period. So as I click through my slides here, you'll see um, how this works. With the Big Bang, um, when we start a migration, we have to shut down the source system and run the migration process during an outage. Um, once the migration is complete, then we can move all of our users over to the new target Alfresco system and where they can begin working. The advantage of a Big Bang migration is that the source system can be immediately decommissioned after the migration is complete, and we only have to go through the planning, configuration, testing, and execution one time. Some drawbacks with the Big Bang approach is that it can require a significant and sometimes unacceptable amount of downtime. Um, that outage period while we're actually running the migration. If we're migrating a lot of content, um, sometimes that period is just too long to be able to do um, this Big Bang approach. It is the highest risk. If anything goes wrong, we have to back out and start over. Um, with the Big Bang, we also have the highest chance of exceeding our timeline and budget. And the last drawback is that every all of the users have to move and be trained on the new system at the same time. So there's kind of a lot of risk built in there. The second migration approach is a delta migration. Um, here we have a bulk migration that occurs while the users are still using the source system. So the backlog of content that's stored in the source system we're moving um, while the system's still in use. And then finally, before the final cutover to Alfresco, um, we uh, get the users out of the source system during an outage period, and we do another small delta migration where we're catching up just the new content and changes that were 
created in the source system since the initial bulk migration was completed. Um, once that small delta is completed, then we can um, enable all of our new user, all of our users on the new Alfresco system. The advantages of the delta approach is a large portion of the migration can be completed while the users are still in the source system. And the delta migration of the changes is generally small, a small subset, um, which minimizes the outage period or the downtime. The migration to new environment can be uh, proven and verified prior to cutover to significantly reduce risk. A um, couple of drawbacks here, all the users have to be trained on the, the new Alfresco system at the same time, similar to the Big Bang, and a, additional verification is needed to ensure that the, del the Delta migration was successful. Our next migration approach is what we call a gradual migration, where we have departments or subsets of users migrating in, in phases. So here you'll see in phase one, um, we take one set of users off of the source system and migrate their content. Once that's done, um, they're able to use the new Alfresco system. Um, and then in phase two, we take the next set of users on and on until we have everyone on Alfresco and we can finally decommission the source system. Some of the advantages of a gradual migration, it's less risky because departments move on their own timelines and departments or subsets of users can be trained on Alfresco individually. So we don't have all users ramping up onto Alfresco at the same time. Um, the Al Alfresco and other system resources can be tuned gradually as more and more users are brought onto the system. So if there's any concerns about um, volume or performance, those can be addressed in a gradual way rather than um, all at once. Some of the drawbacks of the gradual migration, uh, the timeline can be extended to months or years with this approach, and it takes a lot of additional effort to plan, configure, test, migrate, and verify multiple migrations. Uh, with this approach, also the source system cannot be immediately decommissioned. We have to wait until all of the users and business units are off the source system. Um, these migration approaches aren't mutually exclusive. We actually recommend to our clients uh, considering um, a hybrid approach of a gradual migration with a delta. The benefits here uh, reduce the risk of the migration and um, the benefits of moving users over slowly to the new system rather than all at once. Final migration approach that I'm going to talk about is a rolling migration. Um, the key difference with this approach is that we actually move all of our users over to the target system on day one before the migration has even completed. Um, here we actually migrate the content on demand from the source system to the target Alfresco system as the users request the content in Alfresco. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, rolling migration here in a little bit, but some pros of this approach is that all users can immediately take advantage of your new user interfaces and functionality built on Alfresco, and there's no downtime for an initial bulk migration. The content gets migrated as needed and makes it easy to identify um, which content is not being used in the source system. So anything that's not being migrated on demand, anything that's left behind, you know that that content is not frequently accessed. Some of the disadvantages of this approach, um, it does require TSG user interfaces to know when to initiate the migration from the legacy system. And the source system cannot be immediately decommissioned. And you still might have to do a bulk migration if you have a lot of content that's not frequently accessed. There might still need to be a bulk migration to move everything that hasn't been requested on demand um, to the target Alfresco system before you can decommission the source. Here at TSG, we've had a lot of success with the rolling migration approach. Um, here's just a couple of examples. We had a major home and auto insurer uh, wanting to do a migration of 350 million documents from a legacy Oracle Stellant system into Alfresco. 
Um, here we used a rolling migration approach where we only had about 600,000 of the documents migrated into Alfresco when we started um, launching users onto the new Alfresco interface. Um, gradually, we, we moved all 19,000 users to Alfresco along with all of the documents from Stellant. And we continued to roll content from Stellant after all the users were on Alfresco because we the customer had a number of feeds that were feeding data continuously into Stellant. So rather than waiting for new integrations to be built to feed that content into Alfresco, we just continued with a rolling migration from Stellant to keep that content flowing into Alfresco and to, until the integrations could be um, redone. Another example, we have a major third-party administrator for workers' compensation doing a rolling migration for an imaging processing system. In this system, um, this customer was able to utilize Open Migrate's ability to transform TIFF images to PDFs, similar to what we do in a FileNet migration. Um, we moved 30,000 users to Alfresco and 700 million documents using a rolling migration approach. So just to summarize, rolling migration allows for gradual piloting of content and users on the new system and a gradual move of integrations from the legacy FileNet system to the new Alfresco system. But the challenge here is that our customers want to retire FileNet as quickly as possible. So let's take another look quickly at a rolling migration. Here, this rolling migration is a little bit more complex because we have not only a lot of users on our legacy FileNet system, but also a lot of integrations or data feeds that are feeding new content into FileNet continuously. So in this case, uh, we can, over time, gradually um, start moving our users and data feeds over to the Alfresco system and migrate the content using a rolling approach. So on demand, when users need that content in Alfresco, we can migrate that uh, using the rolling approach from FileNet. Eventually, once we have all of our users and data feeds transitioned to the Alfresco system, at that point, even though all of the um, content has not been migrated from FileNet, we're actually able to decommission FileNet at this time. Um, this goes back to when I was talking about our FileNet source connector, where we have an option to extract the content directly from the FileNet database and content store and bypass the FileNet APIs. Um, this is where this comes in. So we're actually able to decommission FileNet because we don't need the APIs for the migration. As long as we keep the database and storage around, we can continue with the migration, even with FileNet being shut down. Eventually, once all of the um, documents are migrated from that legacy FileNet system, then we can also decommission the um, legacy storage hardware and the database as well that were behind FileNet. So for rolling and retiring FileNet, we need to move all the users in a rolling approach. Um, the rolling allows for moving uh, the users to the new Alfresco system gradually. We also need to transition all of the integrations, moving all of those so that they're no longer importing content into FileNet, but rather into Alfresco directly. Um, we also need to do um, to uh, migrate all of the content that's sitting in FileNet. Again, the key takeaway here is because Open Migrate is able to connect directly to that FileNet database and the storage behind FileNet, we actually can decommi decommission FileNet um, sooner rather than later. Once all the users and integrations are off of FileNet, we can shut that system down, even though the migration isn't complete. I do have a quick demo of what a um, rolling migration might look like from an end user interface, interface perspective. Let me bring that up real quick. So this is just a very simple um, user interface um, where we have, um, in this case, an insurance claim system where um, all of our documents are tagged with a claim number. So um, it's similar to case management as well, but if I wanted to 
view a particular claim, I can request that um, from my user interface. And once I click the view button here, this is going to kick off a rolling migration that's going to migrate all of the documents for this particular claim from the legacy system into Alfresco and then present me with the Alfresco user interface. So let me go ahead and kick this off. You'll see there are 20 documents here. And once all of those migrate over, it takes me to my open content um, case interface on Alfresco and you'll see all of the documents that were just migrated using that rolling migration are now here in Alfresco. I can view those in the list as well. So this is what we see our, our customers that have uh, that are utilizing the rolling migration approach. This is how they go about um, having the new user interface while the content hasn't completely been migrated from the legacy system. A few final notes about uh, migration planning. Um, so it's important in the planning phases to determine the full scope of your migration, uh, specifically what content needs to be migrated. Is it everything from the source system or just a subset? Are there retention policies that will allow you to leave some of the content behind and destroy it? Um, are there additional objects that need to be migrated? Is it not just documents, but do you have versions or renditions, folders, annotations, or any other related items that need to be migrated as well? Um, when scoping, it's very important to determine how much content needs to be migrated, not only the number of documents, but also the size of those documents, because those, will, those factors will impact the timing of the migration and how long it will take to run. Some of the opportunities um, when you're migrating from a legacy file net system, obviously I've already mentioned, um, migration can clean up some of the legacy file types that FileNet uses, like single page TIFF documents. We can uh, merge those uh, TIFF pages into a single PDF document. We can eliminate the risk of having to support legacy uh, FileNet storage devices. Um, we can modify and consolidate our content model before moving to Alfresco. We can change and reorganize our folder structure, simplify the security model, and drive inheritance by the folder structure in Alfresco. And finally, uh, we can do a lot of cleanup and leave the junk behind in FileNet and let that go away when FileNet is decommissioned so that we only have the content that we need going forward in Alfresco. When performing migration, it's important to consider your team. Um, uh, in order to orchestrate a successful migration, there are a number of resources that need to be available. So you need to have experts on your source system. So if that's FileNet, you need to make sure you have the, the FileNet resources available to um, assist with the extraction of content from FileNet. Um, similarly, on the target side, um, you need uh, resources available that are familiar with Alfresco and the new Alfresco system. Um, if you're new to Alfresco, um, you know, the, the team that you have currently uh, might be new to Alfresco and not know the ins and outs of the system. Um, you're also going to need some experts that are familiar with the migration tool itself. Um, we often say that um, Migration is a good time to consider consultants because a lot of times migration is a one and done project. So once the migration is done, um, there are resources that you probably won't need, like the, the resources that are supporting the source system or the, the migration tool itself after the migration is complete. So just to wrap things up here, uh, migrating from FileNet doesn't have to be a daunting task if it's planned appropriately. Uh, migration complexity can vary based on a lot of different factors, um, specifically how performant and well-maintained that source FileNet system is, how much content you're actually trying to migrate, and the complexity of your content, molder, content model, folder structure, and security in your source system. Um, as I discussed in the presentation today, um, a good approach uh, for a smooth transition uh, from FileNet to Alfresco is using a rolling migration to reduce risk, cost, and complexity, and allow FileNet to be retired as early as possible. 
So if anyone has any questions, I know at the end of the presentation here, we're going to be um, opening it up to questions. Um, but for now, I'll turn it back over to Jean. Thank you, Tony. What a great webinar. I'm now going to give Christian presentation rights. Um, and Christian is in our product marketing team, and he is going to go through some uh, file net information. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Yeah, so my name is Christian Finzel. I'm a senior product marketing manager here at Alfresco. I have almost 15 years of experience in the ECM and BPM space, and today I will provide you a high level comparison of our Alfresco and IBM Finet. But let's start with this catchphrase. I think everyone knows it, but is it still true? So it came up 20 or maybe 30 years ago at a time when IBM, it was a clear market leader. And according to many organizations, IBM was the only safe bet. So at that time, IBM, they were dedicated to develop innovative products and also deliver outstanding project work. But you know, the times have changed. So organizations, they should ask themselves whether they can still benefit from buying IBM nowadays. And I read an interesting Forbes article it was end of last year, and yeah, the author slightly changed that catchphrase. But don't get me wrong, this webinar is not around IBM bashing. The goal is really to emphasize the differences of both companies and products in a, in a serious way. And yeah, to add some credibility, I know what I'm talking about because I'm an officially certified FileNet professional. I was involved in lots of FileNet projects in the past. But now let's have a look at some two different shaders. So I will um, compare some categories, like we start with cloud here and compare IBM Finder and our Fresco next to each other. So regarding the cloud, IBM Finder and also image services even much longer ago, they were developed years ago and they more or less for Finder PA, they did a lift and shift approach to deploy it in the cloud. And I think except the S3 support, there aren't any new cloud capabilities. They intend to run it in the IBM cloud only. That's an other indicator of a vendor login. So customers, they don't really have a choice where to deploy it. And that's different for Alfresco. So we are truly cloud native and our products, they were developed for the cloud. Also think about the innovation that we provide. We are the only vendor in the content space that has a native AWS Glacier adapter, you know, for low-cost storage. Or think about our strong focus on Kubernetes. And our first can be deployed to any cloud provider. We, of course, we focus on AWS and Azure. Another interesting area of differentiation is around integrations, extensions, and upgrades. So IBM, they come with a really good set of pre-built integrations. But if organizations, if they need to build custom integrations and custom extensions, this can be a huge effort to understand the specifics of such a legacy system. And as we talk about efforts, upgrading a finite system from an older version to a newer version is usually a significant effort. And that's also the reason why so many finite customers are still on older versions. I recently talked to an old friend, he works for a system integrator and they, they also find it or IBM partner. And he said that none of their customers did the upgrade to version 5.5. That's the latest version of P8. Again, major version upgrades, they usually take hundreds, several hundreds of days and that's really more effort than implementing Alfresco from scratch. Let's have a look at Alfresco. So we have similar pre-built integrations, but we have a clear advantage around custom integrations and custom extensions because of our open architecture and our open APIs. Alfresco is really designed to be extended. And last but not least, Upgrades are by far more straightforward with Alfresco than um, with legacy systems. The next category is around innovation. 
I mean, it's, it's easy to say, hey, we are more innovative than a legacy IBM. But what about a side-by-side -side comparison of the innovation of the last two or three years that were provided by IBM? So new features include the support for S3, I mentioned it before. They added support for Docker and some improvements around authentication and the admin console. But that is not a lot. And remember, the last major release was in 2013 when version 5.2 was released. Now let's have a look at the Alfresco releases. And just in the last 12 months, so that's only for our financial year 19, we released five new products. We had 44 feature releases and 40 service packs. Don't you know, by the way, are the names of those new products. That's how innovation looks like. And Think about the future. What do you think? How could this slide look like maybe in two or three years from now? I'm pretty sure it will be very similar. And who do you think supports you as a customer better on your way moving forward and staying competitive? I think the answer is pretty obvious. The last comparison is around the strategy and the go to market. So we heard it from our new customers that moved over from IBM, but also from partners and also from colleagues that joined us from IBM. They are reducing their staff in all areas, especially in sales and in technical levels. This means that a lot of finite experience and expertise, it's lost. And that's a bad signal for all remaining finite customers. You know, they also announced a partnership a few years ago, I think it was in 2015 with Box, and the market was expecting lots of new solutions and joint products from this partnership. But it didn't pay out and Box is often perceived as an IBM competitor and not as a partner. And the whole messaging, it's around IBM Watson. So content and process, it's not strategic anymore for IBM. And let's compare it again with our Fasco. So we are continuing the investment into our products. The digital business platform, it's strategic for us. We have lots of partners around the world and added some really huge system integrators last year as well. And you know, AWS is also one of our strategic partners. And one of our major differentiators is the fact that we are open. So it's the exact opposite of a legacy vendor and that's an important criteria for most customers. So that was really a high level and a short comparison between IBM and Alfresco. So if you need any more detailed information, I really encourage you to download the following public white paper. It was written by, by one of our partners. They are official partners of Alfresco and IBM. So they know both platforms and strategies really good. This paper is ghost written because this partner is still doing business with IBM. And you can imagine what would happen if they put their name and logo on the paper. But that has no impact on the content. So you will get a detailed comparison of the complete ECM and BPM portfolio of both companies. Of course, important for this call today, they're covering the P8 product and also the older image services product. And this partner, they also added the experience of hundreds of projects into that white paper. We have two versions of this white paper. There's a detailed one, it has more than 60 pages, and we have a short management summary of just four pages. And this paper is really written for the technical people, for IT decision makers, for enterprise architects. So it's really focusing on the technical differentiators of um, our Fresco compared to um, IBM. So that's it from my side. I think we have around 15 minutes left for questions now. So back to you, team. Perfect. Thank you, Christian. So if you guys have any questions, please type them into the questions panel. We have a handful of questions already in the queue. So let's get started. Christian, since you're on the phone, um, let's ask you first. Can Alfresco use Box as the storage platform? OK, well, we have no connected to Box. Um, but whoever asks this question, I really encourage you to maybe connect after this webinar and talk about um, storage options. Because, you know, Alfresco 
and AWS will have a strong combination. You can use S3 or even Glacier as your storage platform, and that's well known for really fast, reliable storage and using Glacier also for low-cost storage. So it would be great to connect maybe after the webinar and discuss your, your question. Perfect. Um, Christian, I'll give you another one. Does Alfresco have APIs or services that can be called from our existing homegrown UI? Yeah, good question. Yeah, so that's definitely one of our strengths. So think about what I talked about around integration and extension. So Alfresco is really made to be extended and to be integrated also into other business applications and potentially also into another user interface. So we have a really rich REST API. You can call all the functionality um, using an API call. So again, I encourage you maybe start a trial, get in contact with us to learn more. Have a look at our document at docs um, pages where you get lots of technical documentation as well around our APIs. Perfect. Um, Tony, let's give you a question. Um, does your migration tool take care of the document annotation and security? Yes, so Open Migrate is able to migrate annotations from our source systems, including FileNet, and apply those to content in Alfresco, um, and security as well. So um, I, I mentioned in my slides, but uh, just to recap the security, we are able to apply security specifically to individual documents or folders with Open Migrate, or we can take advantage of Alfresco's folder inheritance for security and basically define the folder structure in Alfresco in advance and then migrate the content into those folders and let the content um, inherit the security of the, the original folders. All right, um, another one for you, Tony. Um, I need to know if the source can be FileNet IS. Yes, yeah, so um, Open Migrate, we do have source connectors for FileNet image services and for FileNet P8. We actually also have a source connector for um, the legacy uh, FileNet document services, which um, haven't seen many uh, customers on for a long time, but we, we are able to migrate out of the document services product as well. Perfect, and Tony, there's kind of a, a two-part question for this one. Um, so, can the content only be stored in the cloud, or is it a complete system? And kind of a second part to that is Azure. So, Azure being a supported cloud platform, what's the integration with Azure? So, with cloud platforms, um, and this is actually probably a question for Christian as well, but um, the Alfresco can de be deployed in the cloud. Um, the system itself can be deployed onto EC2 instances. And there you can have your content store in S3 uh, if you're using AWS. Um, similarly, um, you could have your Alfresco application servers deployed on premise and still have your content in S3 buckets on the cloud. So those are both options um, with Alfresco. Um, as far as Azure, um, Open Migrate, we, we have developed connectors for pushing content into uh, the Azure um, object store as well. All right. Um, yeah, I can also confirm. Um, ahead, only, yeah, that, that's totally right. Um, we really have the option, customers, they can deploy our first go on premise and also use, for example, S3 as a cloud storage option or put everything into the cloud. So yeah, totally agree. Both options are valid. Perfect. Um, let's see. Um, Christian, how does Alfresco compete with IBM Case Manager products on a BPM and ECM platform? Yeah, so that's also a great question. Um, we, you know, we have our Alfresco process services. It's a really modern tool and modern architecture. It's based on the activity engine. It's really a lightweight product, so you don't need these hardware resources that you might need for, for case manager. And again, I highly encourage to download this white paper that I mentioned, and maybe um, we can see the link here again in the slides. So go on this site here, 
download the white paper, it will cover a really detailed comparison of case manager versus our RFS process services. All right, and Tony, um, when you were showing your demo, what is the front end tool as compared to open client ICN? Uh, my demo, I was uh, I was demonstrating the um, open content case tool uh, that is a product of TSG. It's a user interface uh, that is uh, built uh, for Alfresco and is available through TSG. Perfect. Um, and then Christian, is Alfresco offered in a SaaS model or more traditional where we are responsible for upgrading the product? Yeah, so we don't have a SaaS option at the moment. So it's, yep. Yeah. Perfect. And it looks like those are the only questions that are coming in. I might have another um, question for, for Tony. Um, so, Tony, just out of curiosity, what's the typical timeline for final to our fresco migration from, from your point of view? And maybe you can share some additional custom examples where you did this migration. Sure, um, and that's actually kind of a loaded question that I don't have a, a definite answer for. Um, the, the correct answer is it, it depends. So the timing is going to vary pretty greatly depending on a number of different factors. Um, the biggest one being how much content are you actually trying to migrate. So, you know, we've seen FileNet systems that have, you know, hundreds of thousands of documents that need to be migrated all the way up to billions of documents. So obviously in the case where we have billions of documents, um, that, that migration is going to be a longer effort than, than a smaller migration. Um, other factors that would contribute to the timing are also um, like the, the speed of your source file net system, like how well maintained is it? Um, what type of storage are you on? So um, for some of our customers that are still on FileNet image services, if they're still on the optical jukebox hardware, um, extracting the content from um, that legacy storage uh, is much more time consuming than if they were on more modern MSAR or CSAR storage. Um, so that's that's another big factor. Um, I also mentioned the um, how well maintained the system is. Is it on you know modern hardware? Is the the database performing well? All of those are factors that are going to contribute to the migration speed because, um, as I mentioned, Open Migrate you know we can multi-thread it, but it's only going to be as fast as the source system can handle. Um, I would say from a speed perspective, um, this is um, in my um, slides I mentioned the the testing phase of our migration methodology that's where it's really important to do a large-scale test of a migration especially if you're looking to migrate a lot of content from FileNet because that will um, help you benchmark the the timing for the migration as well as potentially identify some bottlenecks a lot of times during um, migration testing we might see oh the the database is spiking at 100% CPU, and you know we might be able to do some indexing in the database to make uh, that migration more performant during the testing phase. Perfect. We actually just got a couple questions coming in, so since we've got a little bit of time, um, I'll ask these last couple questions. Christian, what is the nature of Azure integration, and does it include Azure Blob Storage? We are currently um, working on the blob um, storage. Um, a few partners of our Fresco already have it. Um, so if you ever need to use it now, you can get in contact with our partners. We are also developing our own blob storage connector. Um, so that should be released quite soon, definitely this year. Um, we have lots of customers using Azure. Um, so it's definitely supported, lots of customers using it. And if you have any more specific questions around it, yeah, please get in contact with us. We are happy to help you. Sure. Um, and Christian, another one for you. How does content search services work in Alfresco compared to FileNet? Um, search service is based on, again, we are open source, so we're also using an open source based search engine that's solar that's really a modern search engine it's open source it's lightweight it's fast 
but it has all the capabilities that are needed um, nowadays, um, starting from full text search, um, Google-like search, so lots of capabilities. Great. Um, let's see. Tony, can source source storage be Atmos? Um, I'm actually not familiar with Atmos. All right, so we will follow up with you separately on that one. Um, and then, Tony, are there free trial periods available to test the migration? Um, so I mentioned, after that? yeah, actually, I, I mentioned that um, kind of the migration tool we offer to our clients at no charge. Typically, what we would do is set up a um, small uh, discovery arrangement where we come in and help um, assist with the configuration of the migration tool um, on a small small subset of documents to prove out the migration process. And then from there, um, we'd be able to determine, you know, what the full effort would be for the migration. Great. That looks like those are the only questions in the queue. So I wanted to thank Christian and Tony for giving this great presentation today. Again, you guys will all be sent the recording following today's session. And have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.